you can create your own functions in Excel. And that is amazing. They are known as Lambda functions. And in this video, let's create our own custom Lambda function to extract characters between two delimiters. Let's go. Now we will begin by using the sample data in column A and extract the characters between the two forward slashes. So the same delimiter. We will then enhance our lambda by getting it to work with different delimiters if required. Using the sample data in column E. And finally, we'll use our lambda in another workbook. Now, when crafting your own custom lambda function, job number one is to write the formula and check that it works before you proceed to convert it into a lambda. So in cell B2, there's different approaches for this, but I'm going to use the text after function in combination with the text before function. I've just put in the wrong uh, character there to extract the characters between the two delimiters. So here's text after extracting everything after the first instance of a slash. And then text before will come in and extract everything from there before the first instance of a slash again. So the same delimiter being used and this formula works. Fantastic. Let's convert this to our own custom lander. So for this, I'm going to expand the formula bar to get a bit of room. And before our formula, I will put in the lambda. And this lambda function will prompt us for some parameters and then finally for the function. So when we use a function in Excel, whether that be a VLOOKUP or an IF function or a COUNT IFS, they often will prompt you for some information a parameter or an argument, we input that information and a function uses it. So here, the inputs are going to be where the text is and then what the delimiter is. And we can name these parameters whatever we want. So if I name this first one as range, comma, and then this second parameter as character one, because very soon we will see an example where we use a second character a different delimiter. For now, that's it. I'll use the Alt-Enter shortcut to break it up into different lines for improved readability. And then we'll replace the explicit references. For example, A2 has been told in this function that that is where the text is. But as we convert this to a lambda, I'll change A2 to range because that's the parameter. That's the input from the value. It's not always A2. And then instead of the forward slash, that will be whatever character one the user specified. And then the same again for the other one, whatever character one the user specified. I do need another closing bracket. We now have our lambda. But at the moment, the way this has been created on the grid, if I was to press enter, I would receive a calc error because we don't write Lambda functions in this way. This is how we create them, but we can't use them. We can't apply them in this way. What we want to do though is test that it still works now that we've converted it. And to do that, after the Lambda function, immediately after it, within some brackets or some parentheses, we'll provide those inputs. So the range in this instance is A2, comma, and the character one is his, in this instance is the forward slash. And if I put them into brackets after the lambda and press enter, it now runs it again. It works exactly the same as before, which gives us the confidence now that we can go and define a name for this lambda, which makes it a usable function on the grid. Now to do that, we can use the name manager within Excel. So let me take a copy of this Lambda function. Now we're gonna copy everything except the arguments being given at the end. We'll copy everything else. I'll just come out of there. 
and click on define name in the formulas tab. We can give our function a name. So I'll call it text between using capitals, just like Excel functions are. We can provide a comment and we, we absolutely should, but this is something that we don't necessarily need to waste time in this video for. So I'll just put something simple for now, like extracts text between delimiters. More importantly, I've even made a typo there, but let's proceed. I'll paste in our Lambda function into the refers to box. Now this window is resizable, but unfortunately it is a bit uh, of a horrific environment to use formulas. So create it on the grid, copy and paste in here. Don't really wanna be doing too much work within this name manager. It is literally for uh, the defining and not really for editing. Now I'll click OK and we've got our Lambda. So let me just uh, copy this Lambda somewhere else for the moment so that it's safe because I want to use it again soon. And within the range that we put it before, let's write it again, but this time we have our own Excel function, text between, look at that. I'll double click to use it. Range is A2, comma, the character is the slash. And now we have our own function to extract characters without somebody needing to worry about text after uh, and then text before. So there are many reasons why somebody might craft their own custom Lambda function. It could be to simplify a complex formula that you struggle to remember or just don't want to do. Or maybe you're doing that for colleagues who don't have the same level of Excel skills as you. It could be a function that Excel does not have, such as text between. There's no such thing. So we can create that ourselves. Now, moving on, we want to enhance our Lambda to work with two different delimiters if needed but we want this to be an optional argument. So for example, when we use a function, let's say the search function in Excel, sometimes arguments are optional. We can see the final one here, the third argument of search, where it prompts you for a starting number, is an optional argument, and we know that because of the square brackets. And if it is not answered, it will begin searching from the first character. We want a similar experience in our function. So coming to the Lambda that I copied earlier, let me copy that again. And now that I've copied it, I don't really need that anymore. And over in the sample area to the right, let's paste it into here and let's create a second character. So I'm going to call this char two. So now I've got this third parameter for the second character, the second delimiter. Now we want to include it within our Lambda. And this will be going in the area of this second char one. This will now be char two. But we want it to be optional. If the delimiter is the same, then I don't really want the user to have to write that in twice like I've been doing. If it's different, yes, yeah, specify it. If it's the same, that is just assumed. So within the parameters, I'm going to put the square brackets around the parameter, just like Excel does. Now that itself does not make it optional. That is just for illustration to the user so that they know that this is optional. To make it optional, we come and use a function known as is omitted. So is omitted. And what it will do is just check whether an argument's been omitted and return true if that is the case and false otherwise. So if I put is omitted around char two there, that will just return true if it has been omitted. Now, if it's omitted, we want to use the same character. So around is omitted, I'm going to bring in the if function. So if is omitted returns true, then we will use char one. Otherwise, we will use char2. 
Now to check this out, here's our testing environment. Let's put in the necessary delimiters. So in this example, the first delimiter is actually a space and the second delimiter is actually the slash. So let me put in my comma and I'll put in the slash in a string there. And if we press enter on this, we have an error. And I realize that that is because I haven't changed A2 to the correct range reference. This one here, E2, is our sample data. Okay, it's working. Excellent. So we've taken it further and we've now got this optional third argument. Let's now update our defined lambda. So I'm going to take a copy of this lambda function again. And up into the name manager, I'll edit the text between name that we have and just paste over the new Lambda function. I'll click OK to close all this down. And then let's see this in action. Uh, equals text between. The range is E2, comma, space, comma, slash. Awesome, it works. And if I wanted to check it on the first example, with the omitted argument equals text between the range. This time the argument is just a slash and I'm not going to answer character two and it works as the same delimiter is assumed. Now to finish off this video, I want to use it in another workbook. Now there's a few different approaches to sharing lambdas the simplest way, which I'll do right now, is just to copy a cell that contains that lambda or even a sheet containing that lambda. So it provides a very easy way for us to use our lambdas in any workbook. Okay, so I'm going to switch workbooks for the moment and I can see I've got another workbook here and we've got different delimiters. I have a hyphen and then a period. And we want to use our Lambda here to get this job done. So just switching back to the other workbook again. I'm going to take a copy of any of the cells that have my Lambda in. So I could maybe just take a copy of this cell here. And then switch back to the other workbook. And paste it in anywhere. It really doesn't matter. That's going to complain because it can't really work in the area it's in. I think I might have hit paste by mistake there. So let me just hit uh, yes to this. I can delete that because just the copying of it alone is what's brought across that name. So now in cell B2, I can go and write my text between function and just use it as before. So the delimiters this time are the hyphen and then the period. Two different delimiters and we have text between delimiters. Awesome. So I hope you find this video useful. If you did, please hit that thumbs up and let me know in the comments. Have you used lambdas before? What examples do you have where you will be creating your own custom lambda functions? What a powerful and creative element of Excel this is.